160. He's gone. What's up, guys? It has been a long week. I'm not even gonna lie. I am exhausted. But there is, uh, there is some good news. So the Mercedes has been sold. So that experiment is over. Um, and I don't think I've quite learned my lesson because I'm uh, looking at more, <laughs> more auction cars <laughs> again. So we will s see if that actually uh, turns into anything or not. There is a really, really nice looking uh, G35. It's currently sitting at about two grand. Um, and obviously there's like a few days left on the auction still when you're watching this. So, you know, most things that are too good to be true are too good to be true. I just, uh, God damn it. Um, you know, if I could, if I could snag something like that, there we go. That would be, uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, cause I might, I might, it's a nice manual car too. So I might hang on to that. Uh, the ZX6R is done. Um, you guys are going to see the, uh, the review for that car. Uh, or I'm sorry, that car. You're going to see the review for that bike, uh, coming up here in a little bit. I have filmed the review for the, um, for the, uh, whatchamacallit. For the uh, CBR250, I filmed that review, so that's all done. Um, and uh, so we will, uh, so you guys will see that in a, in a week or so. Um, what else do we got? Uh, I'm still working on on getting that stupid Jixer sold. I think it's a huge pain in the ass. Damn, they're just building tons of houses out here. So, stuff I wanted to talk about today. The first thing is, I, I just want to get some feedback from you guys, because maybe I'm the crazy one. But, so I got an offer the other week on the Jixer 600, and people try to trade me stuff all the time. Mo mostly, for the most part, it's guns, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not really that much of like a gun guy, gun guy, where I gotta have like, you know, like I am about my bikes. I'm just, you know, I got my carry and my dad brought uh, brought me a shotgun, his old shotgun, so I got that at the house now if I need it. But uh, I'm not I'm not like, a, oh, I got like 15 ARs in different configurations. I mean, I can understand, I can respect it. Uh, it's just not my, uh, not my bit. So I get a lot of gun offers and mostly I turn them down because I don't know if people think I'm stupid or something, but they'll they'll be like, oh, well, I got duh, 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 and I Google it, and it's like a $1,200 gun, and you're trying to trade me for a $3,000 bike. Yeah, uh, I think I'll pass on that one, bro. But, um, what was I going to get at? Oh, yeah. So, the other week, I got a really odd trade offer that made me um, probably irrationally, irrationally mad. So, this guy apparently uh, bought a purebred registered AKC, you know, blah, 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 um, English Bulldog puppy. It was about 13 weeks old. Most adorable, chubby little thing you've ever seen. I like, I looked at the pictures and I was like, oh, you're so adorable. And then I was like, wait a second, why, why do I have this? Who sent me pictures of this adorable puppy? And like, what in the hell am I supposed to do with it? And I realized that the guy was offering to trade me a puppy for a motorcycle. And for whatever reason, you know, I mean, I won't dwell into the psychology of it, but that shit pissed me off. Like, I was truly, truly like, come on, Grandpa. I mean, I was really, really pissed off when I saw that. I was like, who the fuck trades a motorcycle for a puppy? Like, I was, I was basically torn between two emotions. Emotion number one is who the fuck trades a motorcycle for a puppy? Like, because the guy was like, well, I paid $2,500 for this puppy. And I was like, you paid $2,500 for a dog you don't even want? Like, what kind of sick, you know, person... I mean, 
you get a dog that's a commitment you make a commitment to that animal so like to, to love it and nourish it for as absolutely long as you can i mean yeah there are situations where somebody's got to give away a dog and i understand that but that better be the last fucking thing you give i mean you better be about to lose your fucking house or something before you give away that dog this guy just you know for him it was a commodity for commodity trade and so i got stuck basically between two emotions emotion number one was to agree to meet him and then punch him in the face to explain to him that puppies are not things that you trade and then the second emotion was just to do the trade because it was such an adorable little puppy now as as a lot of you know i already have 200 pound worth of dog living in my house um and i just took him to the vet today and the bill for the two of them for just yearly checkup and vaccines was just over four hundred dollars so i don't i mean i just don't have the time or the energy for a puppy right now but uh i mean i was just i just saw it and i was like i mean who does that so leave some feedback leave a comment i don't know maybe i'm the crazy one maybe it's totally normal to treat you know a puppy for a motorcycle let me know what you guys think Holy shit, is that guy cooking meat while driving? I mean, is, is that legal? Or safe? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. As long as, like, the meat stays in place. So, what I want to talk to you guys about today, the other thing is, I've been getting a couple questions, so I thought I would just address it. This is on how to ship motorcycle engines. And I wish I, I, I'll put up some pictures uh, right now of the stuff that you need as I talk about it, but uh, I don't really have a completed picture. But here's, here's the general twist on how you ship an engine. At Walmart, they sell a Rubbermaid Tough Roughneck something something. Here's a picture of the thing. It's the blue tub. And you want the one that's like 31 or 33 gallons or something because the reason you want that tub compared to any other tub is it has an extra about two, two and a half inches of height uh, compared to all the other ones, including all the other heavy duty tubs. And it still has a decent amount of uh, a flexibility to it. It's not super rigid. So what you want to do then is at the very bottom of that tub, you want to put down some cardboard, just some, just some general, general cardboardy cardboard, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, couple of layers. And then on top of that, you want to lay down the motor and you want to leave, generally if you can, leave the headers on the motor and lay down on those headers because that's a very, very strong, you know, piece of tube steel or titanium or whatever that's, that's basically not going to give at all. And so there's, uh, there's no big, there's no big worry on that account. Um, I wonder what's back here. We've been back here before, but I wonder if it's changed at all. I mean, this would be a sweet little track. Just saying. Um, so, once you lay down that engine, um, ooh, watch out. There's pipe everywhere. Well, I guess they're still putting in the sprinkler system or whatnot. Yeah, so last time I came back here, this was all wet, and I actually got the, uh, got the, uh, 250 stuck in it. Um, that's kind of a, I don't know, because I'm not really supposed to be back here, so I don't know if I want to go exploring too far. Let's see what else is back here. Um, oops, sorry, pipe. Um... So once you lay that engine down, the next thing I do is I pack the outside of the engine with pieces of styrofoam that I get from things I buy or, you know, just random generic junk. You just cardboard styrofoam packing materials. Just pack the outside of the engine as hard as you can. At this point, uh, you're ready to put the lid on. I always try to put a piece of styrofoam kind of... Uh, Kind of between the uh, the lid and the motor uh, to, to kind of help insulate the top side 
and then you put the top on and what I usually do is I drill two holes on the outside near the handles because it has this kind of latch over handle and I drill that out and uh, I put zip ties through that then I take two orange Harbor Freight straps and run them along the uh, the thin side of the box so basically you know the box is a rectangle and you run them around the short end one on each side and I cinch them down real tight and then I cut off the extra uh, rope and then I zip tied the, uh, the uh, carbuncle things together so they can't be open. So that way I know that my package won't be open and it's well sealed. Now most motorcycle engines weigh less than 150 pounds and FedEx ground limit is 150 pounds. And that box is usually between, with an engine in it, depending on the engine, it's usually somewhere between 70 and $110 to ship it pretty much anywhere in the continental United States. Uh, and that's how I ship all my engines. I put uh, fragile stickers on everything as well, although I'm starting to think maybe I shouldn't because I think that FedEx sometimes takes that as a challenge. They're like, oh, this is fragile. Well, let's see how much punishment it can actually take. Uh, and I, I mean, I've had motors arrive with cracked blocks, cracked covers and all kinds of stuff. And I've had to deal with, with the FedEx fallout from that and having to get them to cover that cost. And with enough bitching, they usually will cover the cost. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the best way I've found to ship it. To be honest with you, if there was something else that was even close to being cost competitive, I would uh, change over in a heartbeat, but uh, there's nothing really that else that I know of that's anywhere near uh, cost competitive to FedEx's uh, ground shipping service. Um, so, you know, you're kind of stuck using it, but you know, that's the way I ship engines. Uh, I haven't had too many many problems but uh, like I said occasionally there is some damage but you want to make sure you want to spend the 17 bucks get the extra big tub pack it with as much the fuck are you doing pack it with as much insulation as you humanly can and then cinch the bad boy down and uh, drop it off at your local FedEx again it's it's FedEx ground um, and the dimensions I think are like 32 by 20 by 18 or something like that um, and it's the perfect size for all of your generic sports bike inline fours triples uh, obviously singles you can actually ship in a smaller container if you need to um, like one of those 25 gallon ones will work just fine for a single um, I've never had to ship a v-twin because they're usually hella heavy and that's the issue uh, because if it's over that 150 pound limit then you either got to sell it locally or you have to find a different way to ship it because none of the major see I hate dumb fucking people like this yeah you're a dumb fucking person that's right um, so what was I going to say FedEx is 150, UPS is 150, USPS is 80. So those are your maximum shipping weights that those uh, companies will handle. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good summer. And uh, if you like these videos, subscribe. Uh, I think I got videos like my Friday, fu you know, Friday fun day videos backlogged like already into August. So there's lots of content coming. Uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. Thanks, guys. Peace.